Next question is from Cyprian Bolin. What is the glycemic index and how does it affect our body? How much does high glycemic index food influence a cut when you're trying to get as shredded as possible without losing lean body mass? It's how fast carbohydrates turn into sugar. Yeah, it, yeah. it really measures just kind of the impact the glycemic load. on your insulin levels, I guess, on how those carbohydrates get turned into sugar as measured in the blood. Now, here's the thing with the glycemic index. I think there's some value to it. But I don't think that this is like the be all end all. I remember when mm. people really started paying attention to this. Oh. It became a standard for sure. Yeah, it was everything. It was yeah. like eat only carbs on the lowest glycemic, only yeah, eat stay carbs away from on bananas. The you know, uh, th those are the demon. You know, the fruit out of all of them because they're so high in glycemic. But what it does is it, it you know, and I, again, there's some value to this, but it does. Uh, you got to also look at individual responses to foods. Um, because your blood sugar doesn't just rise uh, because a food mm -hmm. gets converted to sugar. Your blood sugar rises also if you eat a food that causes an immune response. So they've done studies where they have people wearing these, what mm -hmm. are called these continual glucose monitors, right? Yeah, this, man, this is so fascinating to me. Like we've, you know, we haven't really had anybody on there to explain it like in full detail, but yeah, it cha like it changes person to person based on like how they react to each food. It's crazy. Dude, they, I, I've, seen, I've, I've seen people who they'll eat a cookie and they'll, they'll see their blood sugar rise and then they'll eat like, an avocado, which has no carbohydrates in it, and their blood sugar will go up even faster. And you think, how is this even possible? Well, if you're if you have a food intolerance, your body's immune system kind of mounts a response. Part of that response is an elevation in cortisol, and part of what happens is your liver dumps out sugar because your liver stores some sugar. So you'll see this sometimes if you're a trainer and you train somebody who is diabetic, and you train them too hard. Rather than their blood sugar going down, it'll go up. And I remember the first time this happened to me, I was super confused. I was training my, you know, my client, and he was like on an almost no carbohydrate diet. He had just gotten diagnosed with type two diabetes, and I took him through a, a an intense workout. It was a little too hard. He measured his blood sugar, and he's like, and he, I remember him calling me. He's like, "What's going on?" He goes, "Why did my blood sugar go up? I didn't eat anything. I had a protein. I had a little bit of protein, some fats. We did a hard workout. My blood sugar went up. This makes no sense." I trained some doctors and, uh, at the time, and one of them was a hormone specialist. And I asked him, and he goes, "Oh, he goes, well, if he had a, uh, if you train him too hard, it's a stress response. His liver is going to dump a bunch of sugar, so he doesn't even eat anything to cause that spike uh, in blood sugar." Well, the point that Justin's making is what made me really stop caring about it very much is when that when that news came to to light that how the body is affected so different, like based by case by case, where they had they had showed examples of one person eating an avocado and mm. not spiking their blood sugar and then another person it going through the roof. Yeah. And so yeah. because there's such an individual variance, it's really hard to use like a generic thing like this. I also think that it got a lot of weight or, or got a lot of, uh, you know, pub for a while there because if you if you look at the foods and the, the way it goes, so that very top, uh, we would consider 100 on the glycemic index, the highest is alcohol and sugar alcohol and then sugar. like mm. And then you have like your fruits that are high, like bananas, like you bring up and then you start to go down the list and then you see things on the lower end like your- Oatmeal would, and all that. Yeah. Or yeah. even lower would be things like yams or sweet potatoes, sure. things like that. Mm. And when you actually compare those things, the, like a, a sweet potato is extremely lower on calorie than a, a, a banana, a banana that weighs the same as a, right. a sweet potato, the calorie. So that old advice of like, oh, stick with these lower glycemic foods because of you know X, Y, and Z. Well, and then people would do it, and then they would see weight loss and they'd see results. But the key factor that was probably causing the weight loss for a majority of those people calorie. is lower calorie. Yeah. You start to go towards foods that are lower in calorie, and, and that's you, why you were losing weight. And that's the main reason why you're losing weight. Lane gets into this a lot. Like he talks about the glycemic index and you know, the other thing that will spike blood if your calories are high. So mm -hmm. you could be, doesn't matter where you're on the glycemic index, if you're over consuming by four or 500 calories, that'll also spike blood sugar. Right. So, you know, that the calories are king first, you know, that's the first and most part where I saw the most value in this was competing. Mm. So, hmm. and, and what I used to have to do is I would have, so I would, uh, and where I could see, like I could actually watch the difference, which was really wild. So, when I would get down to like 3% body fat and I would be trying to figure out, okay, what foods am I going to eat 
the 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 24 hours leading up to when I get on stage, I was all every show I would manipulate what that was because different foods would fill my muscle bellies up faster or slower. Give so, you a different look. Right. So it would give me a totally different look. So I found like the perfect combination for me ended up being chicken, rice, and avocado was like the best combination and and about about a 600 calorie meal. And I do two of those by the second meal, it would fill all my muscle bellies, but not make me feel bloated or, or overfill. If I did that exact same meal, except for replace the rice with sweet potato, same calories too. If even if I boosted the amount of, because it takes longer for that to convert over into sugar, it wouldn't fill my muscle bellies up fast enough. Oh, wow. Hmm. So it was really wild, right? So there, I found value there for really starting to play with the glycemic index and foods, but I still had to experiment with which ones my body responded differently to, like in how it would fill it up. But there was definitely a, a major difference of those foods and the way it would make my body look. Well, I think too, this is before we really got a lot of information about leaky gut and like gut permeability and like what, how these foods could be inflammatory towards you or you have an autoimmune response to them and how that affects you, uh, you know, it, it, your blood sugar, the way that your body reacts to all these types of foods. But yeah, it's, it's just, that was like the first start to kind of like really evaluating like, you know, what foods are, are, are going to provide what yeah, for you. Yeah. And the main reason why you want to, if you're otherwise healthy, right? So if you have blood sugar issues, of course, it's important. But if you're otherwise healthy, why is it important to pay attention to how foods may affect blood sugar? Um, well, if your calories are controlled and macros are good, uh, you're still going to burn body fat regardless. But other than that, it determines how you feel. Quick spikes in blood sugar and quick drops in blood sugar cause hunger. They can cause irritability. They can cause you to feel high, you know, uh, drowsy low energy. So that's when this becomes important. Now, can how you feel affect how easy or hard it is for you to eat healthy or unhealthy? Of course it does. So that's when it becomes important. It's not necessarily for the fat gain or fat loss because calories really make the big difference there, but it's how you feel and that's why you should pay attention.